Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show, and we have to talk about another very highly opinionated topic that some people get very triggered over, and that would be tipping. I just recently got back from Japan a few months ago, and it was incredible for me to see a culture where tipping wasn't even a thing. Like, when you go to restaurants, the price you see on the menu is the price you pay. Tipping in their culture is seen as disrespectful, which is something that would never happen here. Or it's just something that comes up when they turn the screen, and then you feel obligated to tip them, because otherwise that means you're bad. But uh, I want to comment on this video, because CNBC really breaks it down perfectly, and I'd like to share this with you. So if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And also a big thank you to NVIDIA AI for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Let's begin. Sometimes my kids tell me, Ma, baby, something. They go, okay, not today because mom no make money today. See, this is a terrible concept where someone like her, if she's going to work all day and she's doing a service for a business, she should be getting paid for that. These aren't people who are on commission. These are not people who like, oh, you you served a happy customer. Now you get a commission. No, you're, you're serving people throughout the day. You're doing a job for the business. I think you should be getting paid. Some days might be better than others, but maybe they should be raising wages on the base of what a lot of these fast food workers are making. So it's not an issue of like, hey, I worked eight hours today and made no money. I know they've raised wages on uh, fast food restaurants. I think it's like $20 an hour in California. Some restaurants are able to get around this because they're not fast food, but for the most part, it does seem as though tipping is used as a substitute for paying people. While restaurant owners across the country might want to be paying their employees higher wages, some, like the owner of Cisco's here in Austin, Texas, say they just simply can't afford to do so. Yeah, I mean, that's the counter argument, is that a lot of these businesses say, well, if we paid them more money, we would go out of business. We couldn't afford it. We would have to raise prices on our foods, but then we would lose the equivalent amount of business. We couldn't afford rent and utilities and overhead. And, uh, you know, it, it's like this is what we offer. And if the customers can help bridge that gap, then we could still stay in business and that's better for everybody. I think there are arguments for both sides on this one, for the business owner and on the employee making the tips. But uh, it's a very difficult industry to be in. Wages across the economy, in the lower third of the economy, have been artificially suppressed for way too long. If you want people to work in these jobs, we have to pay them and not force them to rely on tips. I'll tell you what's gonna end up happening is robots. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff that is going to be automated, uh, including YouTube videos, by the way. I know it sounds silly. We'll talk about this a little later. But I find it remarkable at how easy it is to be able to AI voices, AI videos, all this sort of stuff. And even in Japan, I know I bring up Japan a lot in this one, okay? But there were several restaurants in Japan where you would go and just there'd be an iPad on there. And you just type in the food that you want on the iPad and a little robot will like go and bring it to you. They're cute looking. And I've even seen this in sushi restaurants where, you know, there's there's obviously a chef behind the counter and someone's there, uh, you know, just to make sure everything's running smoothly. But for the most part, like all the servers are just robots. It's mind blowing. I could see us going in that direction in the future. The percentage you're tapping on that tablet might not just be a thank you, great job, but instead, what brings that worker to making minimum wage? The tip should be what a tip was always meant to be a small amount on top, a gratuity. Is there a way that they could just incorporate that into the bill? Like just a 20% surcharge that automatically goes to the server? And then I know it's not technically a tip anymore. Uh, but maybe that helps bridge the gap somehow. Where, yeah, you can keep the price of a burger at $5, but there's gonna be an extra dollar and 50 cents on top of that for like staff and stuff like that. I don't know. You could have a good day at work being a banker and you could have a bad day at work. Same goes for a pharmacist or anyone. Wages are fluid, but I think if you work hard, you're gonna get tipped more. Cisnero says when he and his partners took over the restaurant in 2017, it wasn't profitable. Yeah, I mean, I could see that point of view. I remember working as a real estate agent. There were sometimes months, I'd earn no money. I was showing houses every day, I was writing offers every day, I was marketing listings every day. Sometimes you'd be out of pocket when it comes to marketing expenses, printing stuff, gas. Uh, months, months, not earning a dime, no guarantee of earning anything in the future. And then you have one commission, it'll kind of make up for the last few months and then kind of put you ahead another month. And then you, you go, go through the same thing again. So I understand it to a certain degree, but perhaps in cases like this, if there's truly no money, see, it seems like 
from what I've heard anecdotally, some of the businesses just don't reimburse their employees if they don't make that federal minimum wage. So if they're making $2 and something an hour, it's really on the business to make sure that their employees know that they need to be compensated for that. Their goal is a 10% net profit margin. 10% is a lot higher than a lot of other restaurants. Why not raise the wage? There's months that we don't get anywhere near that margin. We have to ensure that our margins are around where they are. Otherwise, like this business is not functional. I like how this business owner is very forthright in terms of how his business is running and, and very articulate in how he defends his stance and why he does what he does. I think he is a stand-up guy. From what it sounds like, he is just an open book. I tend to agree with him on that. You have to think like a 10% profit margin when you go into a restaurant is very low. And I'm sure it's even lower on foods. Like in a lot of restaurants, it's really drinks and little snacks and appetizers that they make higher margins on. So if you walked into a restaurant like this and you got like the enchilada, let's just say, there might only be a 5% profit margin on that, which, which means you're basically almost getting it at their cost, which is crazy. And then the drinks might be, you know, 50% profit margin. So it really just depends on what you get, but food alone usually is very low. As of 2023, only seven states have eliminated the subminimum wage. You know, this really reminds me that there are a lot of different careers out there that will eventually be replaced or upgraded by artificial intelligence. Like even with these YouTube videos, most people don't see all the research, script writing, filming, post production, editing, description, title and thumbnail planning, and analysis that goes into each and every video I post multiple times a week. But thankfully our sponsor, InVideo AI, is there to help. For those unaware, they can take any video idea and help you create a published ready video in your own voice with just text-based prompts and editing. For example, let's just say I want to create a video on how to buy a house in 2024 to be posted on YouTube in an educational tone for someone starting out with no money. From there, InVideo AI will create an engaging script, find high quality relevant footage, add subtitles, include a human sounding voice over and within minutes, you'll get to see the first cut of your video. Lastly, never underestimate the power of negotiation. You can even give it simple text commands to make any changes. So if there's something you don't like, no problem. Just ask to change it. If you don't like the intro, ask to start the video in a different way. If you don't like a particular moment of B-roll, you could quickly edit that out with something else. Now what's even more remarkable is that you could upload a simple 30 second clip of your voice, giving InVideo AI permission to clone it, and then your voice can be used throughout your other projects. Like this is completely AI right now and it's incredible. So if you're interested in checking it out, you can get started for free and create up to four videos a week. But if you'd like to clone your voice and create videos without a watermark, then I'd highly recommend choosing the paid plan that starts as low as $20 a month. This also saves you hundreds of dollars that you'd otherwise have to spend on editing tools and stock footage subscriptions since they have that automatically covered. Feel free to check it out today by using the link down below in the description or by scanning the QR code on the screen right here. Enjoy. Thanks so much. And now let's get back to the video. These states actually have the same or in many cases higher restaurant industry business growth, job growth rates in the restaurant industry, and tipping averages than the rest of the country. Yeah, but couldn't that also be because those states have a larger economy than the rest of the United States? Like when I'm looking at California, it's a bit of an anomaly and all these sort of things. You have some very high income uh, people, very high income spenders. There's a lot of money going around in those economies that would not be the case in most of the other parts of the country. I don't think people realize how impactful that tip can be solely because they're so accustomed to tipping everywhere now. That's gonna hurt businesses. That's gonna hurt people who actually are working really, really hard and busting to pay for their families because you tipped down the street at your doctor's office or something random like that. I completely agree with that. It's tipping fatigue. It's everywhere you go, everywhere. You're paying a tip. You're going through a drive-through and there's that little thing. It's like the tip on top of your meal through a drive-through. It's getting a smog check. Kid you not, getting a smog check. Uh, just a normal thing. They go and you know check the smog in the car and they ask to tip on top of that. It's, it's everything is just a, t a tipping. And so when you feel like, oh, I tipped over here, I tipped over here, I tipped over here, the tips overall go down even though you are tipping more overall. And for people that really rely on those tips, yeah, it's gonna hurt him. When Adam Orman and his partner Fiore Tedesco opened this place in 2016, uh, paying yeah. just the minimum wage wasn't an option. A 20% hospitality charge is included on every check. Yeah, see, I'm wondering why more restaurants don't do that. It just seems like a very easy thing to do across the board, make it 18 to 20% mandatory, and you know, just good service is a part of that. I, I don't get how, like, I would gladly do that if just every restaurant just across the board, hey, I'm slapping an 18% on this, that's the tip, that is what it is. If you want to do more than that, fantastic, but this is going to be the minimum, it's a part of the bill. 
why not? I'd be for it. I wouldn't be able to live here with a child. It's not dependable, depending on how busy it's going to be that day and if there's weather involved and how much business you have. You just don't make any money that day and then it gets subsidized by your other days. That's a great way to look at it too. I never thought of how weather dependent some of these careers would be. Like if it's raining or snowing or really hot outside, that might affect how much you make in a day, which is, uh, you know, not ideal for for people working this many hours this consistently. Our margins are extremely thin. Labor is the one that we've chosen to spend more on. Food is the one that's hardest for us to wrangle, and those are the ones that we can't get around. That's very risky though. I mean, that's the, the downside of this is that, from my perspective, they're not operating with a large enough margin to weather anything that happens to them. I mean, they're one slip up away from losing a lot of money on this. That's the risk I see. So, you know, I would be almost in favor of them making a little more money just if that meant that they'd have a buffer if something were to come up that they could stay afloat. We've gotten feedback, people thinking that it's sneaky, uh, people thinking that we are going behind their back to charge them for something that they didn't consent to. Yeah, it's when it's not the norm though, a lot of people are gonna make assumptions like that. You know, I, I kind of, get it from the consumer standpoint. Like a lot of these things are not black and white and I see both perspectives. It, it takes some getting used to when you walk in a place and it's normalized just to tip what you want to based on the service versus it's a mandatory thing that they're baking in no matter what if you wanna eat there. And if you don't look at that, it's kinda of sneaky. Like I've seen quite a few times where uh, restaurants will say, if you if you have a party of, of six or more, a 20% gratuity is automatically included. I think that's fine. But there's sometimes where, uh, you know, you don't know if it's included, it doesn't like explicitly say it on the menu, and then you get the bill, and you tip on top of that without realizing that the tip was already included, and then you look at it and be like, oh my gosh, I just like 40%. So. It happens, but I think as long as it's in your face and it's known, there's no problem. Cisneros believes his staff too is better off with tips. Loyal customers that come here, they do take care of the staff because they know that they're really, really good people who've worked here for a long time. We've been around for 70 plus years and it's somehow worked for that long, so we're not stopping because of that reason. I agree with that. There are certain restaurants that uh, we go to all the time. And by all the time, I mean like once every other week, let's just say we're there. And when you get to see the same people over and over and over again, you just naturally tip more because you know them, they know your order, you, be, you become very friendly. It's really nice. So like a, a good place, by the way, if you want a good recommendation in Las Vegas for all you can eat sushi, lately I've been going to Tengoku, it's in Henderson, and they're so nice there. I recommend leaving them a a fat tip because uh, their food is delicious. They're so nice. I love it there. I'm usually there every other week at, at some point randomly. But uh, yeah, Tengoku for anyone who wants a good recommendation and get the Paradise Roll. Uh, that's my favorite. Tell them tell them I sent you, um, which would be kind of cool. But yeah, leave a good tip because they're fantastic. And um, I agree when he says that. Those opposed to raising the minimum wage argue it would cause employers to cut the number of hours each employee works to compensate and consequently, have them actually making less. They're also worried a raise will eliminate jobs. Mm, yeah, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. You know, a lot of this is like theory where you don't really know what's gonna happen and every situation is gonna be different. I'm sure in some situations, raise the minimum wage, the entire place goes out of business. Other places, raise the minimum wage, uh, they do just as well and everyone makes more money. And, and the customer ultimately ends up paying for that, but they're okay with it because they keep going. I think it really depends. Every location is different. Every restaurant is different. Some, some restaurants are just like at the line where it's better for them to pay less and operate on tips than to pay more and just cease to exist. I don't think there's a one size fits all approach, unfortunately. As much as people would like there to be a solution, I don't know if there's an easy solution on this. According to advocates, if the tipped minimum wage was raised to $15, the price of food would only increase by 25 cents a day for the average American household. They believe the benefits will outweigh the 25 cent increase. Yeah, I have no idea how they calculated that. I mean, if that's the case, if it's just 25 cents, I'm sure everyone would be okay with that. But how is it only 25 cents? I feel like it would be so much more than that. Like you have to think like on the average meal, you're tipping at least like five bucks, right? I mean, depending on the cost, obviously, but it like minimum $5. So I don't know how that would translate to a 25 cent increase. I don't know. The goal here is to continue to grow, but not have to charge people an arm and a leg to come have a really good meal. Continue to support your small businesses, your local businesses, because that's 
the heart of the city. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. And how about this? As a thank you for making it to the end of the video, there's a $20 bonus for you waiting down below in the description or when you go to acorns.com slash gram just for the month of April. They're an investment app that rounds up your purchases to the nearest dollar and then invest the differences in your behalf. So if you're interested in signing up and getting a $20 bonus for like three minutes worth of work, that link is down below in the description or go to acorns.com slash gram. Enjoy. Thank you so much. And until next time.